think we're in this really exciting place right now where there are a lot of people who are worried about climate change and do campaign about it and write letters to their MPs and what they're seeing is complete governmental inaction. You know, it seems like the government's paralysed between the targets that it's saying, that it's saying that we're going to commit to, and its plans to expand Heathrow, its plans to expand Stansted, its plans to build seven new coal-fired power stations in the UK. So all of these things, you know, all of these construction plans on a sort of on a centralised government level mean that there, you know, it makes every single attempt that we individually make to cut our carbon completely meaningless. And I think that more and more people are getting frustrated about that. And I think that, you know people are turning to new forms of protest because they're seeing that the usual forms aren't working and I think direct action is going to be one of those forms that people turn to when they know that their voice won't be listened to otherwise. I haven't got a history of direct action at all um, but when you see complete inaction in the government then something has to happen. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm becoming more of a direct action person as, as the days go by. Of extra expansion, it really does, really makes you realise that actually the government's not listening at all. And so obviously for people like us, we start to get angry and then we really do begin to wonder whether just being normal and carrying on and just doing it one way is actually the right way. Maybe it's time to get angry. I'm becoming much more of a direct action person because I, I realise that we've got between five and eight years to really stop the domino effect. I wouldn't get involved in violent direct action, but I'm prepared to break the law in a very small way to, to express the enormity of the challenge we face on climate change. I'm not a lawbreaker, I'm a peaceful, law-abiding middle-aged lady, but I feel very strongly about the issue and we need to do more than merely politely writing letters and talking to our MPs. Women fought to get the vote and we achieved change. We're going to fight on climate change. We're going to stop airport expansion. We're going to stop coal-fired power stations. And we're going to make sure that one way or another we make this government listen. The cost of privilege is absolute integrity. And at the moment, the UK is falling far short from that. We're allowing climate change to happen and we're stepping back. We're saying we can't do anything about it. We can't be bothered to deal with it. And what that means is that we're condemning at annually 160,000 people to death. You know, it's going to get far worse. We're approaching catastrophic climate change and we need to do something about it. And instead what you get is the government saying, oh no, we don't want to act because the people might not want us to act. And the people say, oh well, you know, climate change can't be a problem because the government aren't telling us it's a problem. Like, what we need to do is we need to realise it's a problem and go out and take action for ourselves. And that's what democracy is about. It's about seeing what is wrong in society and having a voice to vocalise it and to challenge it. And that's what we've lost. So what we need to do is we all need to take direct action as the last resort of a democratic society to make clear to the government that we won't lie down, we won't allow ourselves to be led into catastrophic climate change and to suddenly be responsible for you know, like X million people dying.